take a look at this little guy. This is the RCP Mini, our new and smaller version of the popular RCP. And one of the reasons for making this design is that some people have less space in their OB trucks for uh, lining up the RCPs in the CCU section. So where you could have only four of these, you can now have six RCPs if you choose this design. It's compatible in the form factor with the Sony RCP1000 series, so it will fit right into the rack space you already have. The RCP Mini can send control signals into your infrastructure in two different ways. Either you use SDI return feeds to your cameras, and if you do that, you are probably using Blackmagic design cameras such as Blackmagic's Micro Studio camera, the Ursa Mini Pro series, and so forth. So basically, the return feed to the camera will contain CCU data for lens and so forth. Alternatively, you use the Ethernet port, and if you use that, you could also control Blackmagic cameras either through an ATEM switcher or using the Ethernet SDI box that we are selling too. It's also possible to configure the RCP to control robotic cameras and whatnot. Basically, all the type of device cores that are camera um, focused could be installed on the RCP and be used to uh, do CCU control of cameras. On the back side, we also find this connector, uh, XIO, which is known from Sony RCPs. It has the same pinout, so this will basically take a trigger input and also give you relay outputs for joystick override. And finally, we have the camera selector here where you decide which camera ID on the network you are communicating to. The question is if we had to skip features with the RCP Mini compared to the regular RCP. Well, since we have less interface components, we have to pack features into that unit differently. But they are both running on the Unisketch platform, which means that we can assign any functionality to both of the units. We'll now take a look at how we decided to make the default configuration work. And for the default configuration, we have designed these buttons to select different states of the RCP Mini. So right now, we are um, adjusting the gain with these three knobs for R, G, and B, red, green, and blue gain, when we adjust the knobs here. When I press this one, we go to lift. We're now adjusting RGB lift. With this knob, we go to RGB gamma with these three knobs. And the final one will change things a little bit because now we are addressing uh, camera features like sensor gain, shutter speed, white balance. And you also see that this button has now become a shift key instead of selecting uh, um, file banks so, or settings. So with these two knobs in those three modes, these buttons will be used to store and recall settings um, on the cameras. But when I go to uh, camera adjustments, this becomes a shift key. So what do you think a shift key is? Well, that's a clever way to give um, new functionality to these three buttons. So as I press the shift key, you see how we are now adjusting hue, contrast, and saturation here. We also have access to, to putting color bars on the camera. So let's try to press that and we see color bars on the monitor over there for the Micro Studio camera connected to this RCP. And then finally, we have a reset all feature. The lower section of the RCP Mini is more or less designed like on the bigger brother over here. It means we have the classic iris joystick and you have the display reflecting what the values are. We have a limiting function here so you can set a button and the top limit for the iris. So now we couldn't go any higher than 82%. We also have the master black wheel on the joystick, which is called Lift Y on a Blackmagic camera, and that's reflected in the left side of the display. Then we have the joystick override button on the top. It's actually mirrored on this one called Preview. So if you push this one or if you push this one, it's going to be the same. And if you listen closely, you can hear the relay clicking on the EXT connect on the back side. The one that I said was Sony compatible, so you could just plug it directly into your existing GPI cord from uh, your video router or however you manage your preview screen for the CCU operator. We also have uh, auto iris active function so you can enable and display, uh, disable the RCP. So right now it's completely inactive and doing nothing. We also have a relative button uh, right here. So that's how we designed the lower part. The ID display is also very important and that's hooked up 
with the GPI input on the EXT connector so it will light up in, uh, with red tally whenever you receive a GPI trigger coming into the RCP uh, from your video switcher. A very exciting fact about any Skyhoy controller, including the RCP Mini, is how you can configure it. So you can repurpose it in the future for other cameras and you can also fine tune it to whatever your needs are. And in this case, I would like to show how the focus adjustment feature could be moved to another knob if I wanted to. And the focus adjustment feature was found when I press uh, or go to the camera state, press the shift button and you see this display gives me now access to focus. So it's kind of well hidden. But let's assume that I want to bring it out on one of the other knobs, for instance, this one instead of sensor gain. So it's really easy because what I need to do is to connect the RCP Mini to my laptop, load up the firmware updater app from Skyhoy and then press open configuration. It takes a few seconds and then a web page from our online server will load and then you see the configuration for your RCP Mini. You go to the particular knob where the function is found, in this case here, and there we find, if we look at the camera state, when the shift key is held down, we have access to camera uh, focus from, uh, on the Blackmagic Shield. So it kind of makes sense why it pops up right there. But what I want to do now is to take this function and move to a different place, say this encoder here. So I first want to go to the top of the web page and then select this encoder. So I go there with my mouse, then I identify the camera uh, state and then I just want to overrule this completely. So what I do is I remove the existing functionality out of, out of there and then I add the functionality of focus for the, we have to scroll a little bit here, camera control, I'm looking for focus. It's right there, focus. All I need to do now, well, no, that's not true. I also need to make sure that it selects the right camera, which is stored in memory A. And now we are good to go. So I press the green save button in the corner. Then I press update back in my firmware application. And a few seconds or minutes later, you have this change installed on your controller. What if you want to control other cameras or maybe even other units? So other cameras could be like this robotic camera from PTC Optics. It could also be Sony robotic cameras. And a particular unit that I like a lot is this one from Ensemble Designs, which is a frame synchronizer with a built-in color corrector. And basically what you can do here is to supply inputs from cameras that you cannot otherwise control uh, directly on the camera, but communicating to this unit, you can do color correction on the incoming SDI signal, and then it goes out here, frame synchronized and color corrected, and that could be hooked up to the RCP. And see how that great that would be if you had cameras from Blackmagic, from um, PTC Optics, and other cameras, they could all be controlled with the same user interface using RCP minis, and nobody would really care if this communicates with a Blackmagic camera or robotic camera, the user experience would be the same for the CCU operator. The way you do this is again, if you go back to the configuration page, you can see the access to the different supports that we have are done by device cores. So in this case, I could simply go here, press add devices, and then I'm taken over to a page where you see the existing installed devices like camera control here and then I could click the add another device in the bottom and now you see a whole list of things that you could install support for like here we had the camera control if you scroll down the list you'll find a ton of robotic cameras that are supported like Panasonic's, PTC Optics, you find Sony robotic cameras as well such as the BRC H900 series and so forth, there's another one right there. So that's how great the potential is of the RCP Mini and the RCP in the regular size as well. All thanks to Unisketch OS and Device Course.